Hi children. Today we are going to discuss about the very first chapter in our ninth class CBSE curriculum that is number systems. Okay. So, the very first chapter is number systems. So, what else are there in this number systems in our textbook? So, first have a while look about this number systems. How many number systems so far there in our mathematics? That is the very first thing. And we should learn briefly about rational numbers and irrational numbers. So, this is what the concept that we are going to discuss in our number systems. And after that, the properties of indices, okay? properties of exponents, exponential properties. And we will discuss about that also in this concept of number systems. So, firstly, the number systems, how many number systems are there? Okay, As we discussed earlier in grade 8, we have number systems like the very first number system is if you want to count the objects, then we use 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and so on. They are called counting numbers or natural numbers. So, the very first number system is natural numbers. And natural numbers are indicated by the letter N because it starts with capital N. So, natural numbers are the numbers which are equal to the combinations of or the collection of counting numbers. Okay? So, these are called natural numbers. We know what is the very first natural number, but we do not know what is the last natural number. And moreover, here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and so on you can say what are two consecutive natural numbers also. If I say one natural number, then I can say what is its predecessor and what is its successor. Right? That is about natural number system. And the second number system is, what is that second number system? For example, um, if you come across one situation, that situation is like in your class. Okay? In your class, of for example 30 members in your class of 30 members how many number of people or how many number of boys whose height is more than 8 feet is it possible it is not possible right then what would you say we would simply say that there is no such student whose height is more than 8 feet more than 8 feet height is not there being a student of grade 9 Maybe if one or two students are there, then it is impossible case. So, simply you can say that there is no such student in our class. So, but mathematically we will have to represent that by a number. That number is there is no, there is no in the sense there is a number called 0 to represent no. So, natural numbers along with 0 because after 0, there is one student or there are two students or there are three students, we can say that. So, natural numbers along with 0 are called whole numbers, right? They are called whole numbers, okay? So, what are whole numbers? Whole numbers are indicated by the letter W because first letter of whole numbers is W which is equal to 0 along with natural numbers. So, 0 union natural numbers. What is this union stands for is the combination. Union means the combination of natural numbers and 0. Otherwise, we can simply write it as set containing 0, 1, 2, 3 and so on. So, what is this set as per our knowledge? That is the symbol to use the collection. Right? So, this is the collection of 0, 1, 2, 3 and so on. So, the number system so called is whole numbers. And after that, the next number system is, what is the next number system? Later on, some different kind of numbers are being introduced. Those different number systems are, for example, if you go to some um, areas, hill stations and moreover, uh, like uh, the stations like Himachal Pradesh and moreover, Shimla, Darjeeling and Leh, Ladakh, these kind of areas, then there is a lot of ice. Okay? So, 
in that suppose if you want to identify the temperature in that particular place then the temperature becomes less than 0 degrees less than 0 degrees are nothing but what kind of temperature it is we can call that as the temperature is in temperature is decreasing since the temperature is decreasing or temperature is increasing in some areas for example when you go down into the earth then the temperature increases a lot so there the temperature increase and sometimes on the earth itself we can see some uh, sometimes some temperature increase and decrease as per our uh, you know the seasons so here temperature increases and temperature decreases then also we will have to use one symbol that symbol is when the temperature is increasing gradually increasing then we say that it is increasing means that value is getting more and more then we will definitely use the symbol positive symbol but when the temperature is decreasing gradually then definitely there is a symbol which is opposite to positive they that symbol is named minus symbol so there are the numbers with minus as well as plus those kind of numbers are like set containing and so on minus 3 comma minus 2 comma minus 1 0 1 2 3 4 5 and so on right so these kind of numbers what do you call these kind of numbers actually these kind of numbers introduced by german people and these numbers are said to be Jolen numbers Z A H L E N Jolen numbers okay and later on this Jolen numbers is also called as integers okay Jolen numbers are integers and what is the first letter in Jolen numbers or integers which is either I otherwise Z so integers are indicated by the letter i or z generally integers means indicated by i but why to indicate i with z or integers with z because the word jolly numbers given by german people so according to them integers are also called as jolly numbers that is why we indicate integers by z also right and here like natural numbers and whole numbers are integers in indices we do not know what is the last number as well as we do not know what is the first number also but whereas in whole numbers we know what is the first number and in natural numbers we know what is the first number but whereas in indices we cannot say what is the first number and what is the last number but we can say what is the next number to the given number means we know what is the predecessor and what is the successor of the numbers right okay fine so these are three number systems after that uh, for example, you are given an apple, right? So, I just want to cut that apple into four equal parts. If I cut it into four equal parts, then I am taking one equal part. I just want to represent that one equal part mathematically. How is that possible? You already learned it in 6th class, 7th class and 8th class also. So, that is one part out of four parts. So, I can say that one divided by fourth part of the apple I am taking right so 1 by 4th part or 1 4th part of an apple 1 4th what is this 1 4th 1 by 4 is called as a fraction right so we have different kinds of fractions so all these kinds of fractions along with negative fractions and positive fractions of course 0 is also so these kind of fractions together constitute one number system that number system is rational numbers okay see this what is this one out of four so one part out of four understand so when you perform a division then for what you are performing division for getting quotient we are performing division so that is why rational numbers is also called as quotient numbers so that is the fourth number system i am writing here the fourth number system is quotient numbers quotient q u o t i e n t quotient numbers so quotient numbers are also called as rational numbers so quotient numbers are rational numbers are indicated by the letter q okay so rationals are indicated by the letter q and how do we define quotient numbers or rational numbers where q is the collection of the numbers which are in the form of p divided by q where q 
q is not supposed to be zero and p as well as q both must be integers okay p by q q is not equal to zero p comma q belong to integers provided the hcf of p comma q is equals to 1 so this is very important and basic point right see i have some numbers and when do we call those numbers as rational numbers or non rational numbers and let us try to understand the definition of a rational number okay p divided by q where p and q are integers q is not supposed to be zero okay so in this p divided by q in this p divided by q what happens when q is equal to zero because q is not equal to zero why do we um, believe in that definition blindly so you should know the reason behind it q is equal to zero what happens when q is equal to zero then it would be p divided by zero p divided by zero means you will have to divide p by zero okay let us try to divide p by zero zero how much sir p zero anything sir zero only there is no p for zero that is why it is not possible to divide any number by zero that is why q is not supposed to be zero if you cannot divide any number by zero what does that mean it means we do not know the value of this and we do not know in mathematical language we can call it as undefined okay and the symbol for undefined or we do not know is that that is called infinite symbol undefined symbol okay that is why q is not supposed to be zero so from this we can conclude one thing that whenever you see a fraction with the zero denominator and non zero numerator simply you can say that the value of the fraction is going to be undefined we can conclude that okay and coming to the second case okay q is not supposed to be zero what happens when p is equal to zero let us see p is equal to zero but q is not supposed to be zero okay when p is equal to 0 in the fraction p divided by q p is 0 q is non zero let it be q 0 divided by q what is the value of 0 divided by q let us try to find it out you will have to divide 0 by q right q how much sir 0 q 1 sir q q 2 sir 2 q q 3 sir 3 q but q 0 sir 0 that is why q 0 sir 0 the remainder is going to be 0 so what is the quotient here quotient is equal to 0 that is why 0 divided by q is going to be 0 right so here we can conclude one thing that 0 divided by anything anything in the sense it's a non zero number 0 divided by any non zero number is going to be 0 right if you identify 0 in the numerator and any other non zero number in the denominator we can conclude that the value of the fraction is going to be 0 right and coming to the third case what is the third case see we discussed about what happens when denominator is zero and what happens when numerator is zero now let us see what happens when p a is zero as well as q is also zero then in p divided by q zero divided by zero what is the value of zero divided by zero can we call it as one because zero one sir zero zero one sir zero so one divided by one equal to one but i can say that 0 1 sir 0 0 2 sir 0 then can i call it as 1 divided by 2 i cannot why am i getting different different answers because my question is invalid question understand suppose if i ask you how many number of intelligent students are there in the class then everybody feels that they are intelligent but how can you measure that they are intelligent or not it is not the criteria for them to say that they are intelligent so then if i conduct one test okay in that particular test suppose if i so take the scale to 1 2 3 4 5 okay scale of 5 and who got highest mark will be considered as the first ranker but i cannot say that he is the intelligent i can say that he is the first ranker in my test understand so if i say he is the intelligent then by some other teacher if any other test conducted to that same set of students that particular student who got first rank in my test may or may not get first rank in that particular test so that is why my question or my statement is valid i would not say that he is intelligent 
you understand so like that here p is equal to q, q p is equal to q is equal to 0 where 0 divided by 0 if i say 0 1s are 0 0 1s are 0 so my answer is 1 divided by 1 is equal to 1 then definitely I will cancel 0 and 0 with some other number 0 1s are 0 0 3s are 0 then it would be 1 divided by 3 so 1 divided by 3 is also answer for this 0 divided by 0 1 by 1 is also answer for 0 divided by 0 means what 0 divided by 0 is getting infinitely many number of values why is this 0 by 0 getting infinitely many number of values because the question itself is invalid understand so 0 by 0 is an invalid number that invalid number is called as undefined number but in our higher studies like plus 1 plus 2 in the concept of concept called calculus we call this 0 divided by 0 as indeterminate form indeterminate form means the value of 0 divided by 0 cannot be determined so that is why 0 divided by 0 value cannot be determined got my point right so that is about p divided by q as simply a rational number okay if you want to conclude a rational a number or a fraction as a rational number then definitely you will have to follow this statement but there is one technical point that definitely follow p comma q is equal to 1 the highest common factor of p comma q is equal to 1 it means the fraction should be in simplest form let me take one example that example is like my fraction is going to be zero is this zero a rational number then definitely i will have to follow the definition zero should be in the form of a fraction can i write this zero as zero divided by one yes of course zero divided by one and the second condition q is not equal to 0 so it is in the form of p divided by q right so where q is not equal to 0 q is equal to 1 so not equal to 0 p comma q are integers both 0 and 1 are integers therefore my number 0 is a rational number for example if i take a number minus 3 is this minus 3 a rational number let me see this minus 3 is equal to minus 3 divided by 1 now denominator is not equal to 0 both numerator and denominator numerator is a negative integer and denominator is a positive integer so of course both are integers therefore minus 3 divided by 1 is also an integer but if i take 0 0.3 is this 0 0.3 an integer let me check 0 0.3 is nothing but 0 0.3 divided by 1 first condition q is not equal to 0 but what is the second condition p and q are integers where q 1 is an integer but 0 0.3 is not an integer then how can you say that 0 0.3 is a rational number we are checking till here only but we will have to check the other condition also what is that the highest common factor of p comma q should be 1 but see here 0 0.3 is not in simplest form because 0 0.3 is the decimal form of one fraction right so first you will have to simplify the given fraction and then after getting the simplest form of the given number then only you will have to check whether it is a rational number or not can we say this 0 0.3 as 3 divided by 10 divided by 1 is equal to 1 so 3 divided by 10 by 1 is nothing but 3 divided by 10 right so the value of 0 0.3 is basically 3 divided by 10 this is the simplest form of 0 0.3 now you will have to check whether it is a rational number or not yes 3 and 10 both are integers of course 10 is non-zero number therefore 3 divided by 10 is a rational number therefore 0 0.3 is a rational number hope you understand when you check whether the given number is a rational number or not first the given number should be in simplest form right and then only you will have to check whether it is a rational number or not that is why this condition plays a major role but in some textbooks we see the definition as only p divided by q q is not equal to 0 p comma q belong to z only given but you will have to mention this condition also that both numerator and denominator must be in simplest form and basically the given number should be in simplest form if the given number is in simplest form then only 
we will have to check whether it is a rational number or not. Okay? So, this is about rational numbers and now we will discuss about some different rational numbers. For example, if I take 1 and 2, this 1 and 2 are natural numbers, whole numbers, indices. But if you consider this 1 and 2 numbers are natural numbers, then is there any natural number exist between these two natural numbers? 1 comma 2, what is the next natural number to 1? 2 is the next natural number to 1. Therefore, there is no number exist between this 1 and 2. Okay? I am taking 1 comma 2. If 1 comma 2 are natural numbers, there exists no natural number between 1 and 2. Okay, fine. If I consider 1 and 2 as integers, is there any integer exist between 1 and 2? Obviously, no, because the next natural number, next integer to 2 is 1. If I say 1 comma 2 are 2 rational numbers, yes, 1 comma 2 are rational numbers, yes, no, we checked. Is there any rational number exist between 1 and 2? That is what we will have to check. Rational number should be in the form of p divided by q. p divided by q in the sense what? For example, you have a number 3 divided by 5. 3 divided by 5 is a rational number, but every rational number can be converted into a decimal form. So, that decimal form may be a terminating decimal or non-terminating but repeating decimal, whatever you, the decimal that you get. See here, 3 divided by 5 is equal to 0 0.56 or 30. So, 0 0.6 is a number. Right? If you see this 0 0.6, I just want to know what is the number which is more than 0 0.6, which is more than 0 0.6. You can say that 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 1, 2, 3 and so on. But if I want to find out the number immediate to 0 0.6, is it possible for me to figure it out? Suppose if I say 0 0.61, then definitely the one more number will come out that is 0 0.601. So, 0 0.601 is more than 0 0.6 means 60 but less than 0 0.61. Okay? 0 0.601 is only the smallest number. No, you cannot say that because 0 0.6001. Is there any smallest number smaller than this? Yes, of course, that is 0 0.60001. So that if you consider any one of the number as a rational number, definitely we cannot find what is the, what is the next number to it, otherwise what is the before number to it. Understand? It may be possible in natural numbers, whole numbers, in integers, but it is never possible for a rational number. So, that is why if you take 1 comma 2 or 2 numbers as natural numbers, how many number of natural numbers exist between 1 and 2? If I say 1.01 1 .01 is a number which is more than 1 and less than 2. 1.001 .001 is a number which is more than 1 and less than 2. Like that, how many numbers are there between 1 and 2? There are infinitely many rational numbers between 2 numbers, whatever the numbers that you take. There exist infinitely many number of rational numbers between any 2 numbers, any 2 numbers. Obviously, the numbers can be considered as rational numbers only. Right? Now, the point is, suppose you are given 2 numbers. Those two numbers are like two fractions that I am taking now. Those two fractions are 3 divided by 5 and 7 divided by 5. These two are two fractions. I just want to find, I just want to find 5 rational numbers between 3 by 5 comma 7 divided by 5. 5 rational numbers between 3 divided by 5 and 7 divided by 5. How is that possible to find out three rational numbers, five rational numbers between 3 divided by 5 and 7 divided by 5? Let me check. Suppose I am going to use the concept of average. Suppose there are two numbers A and B. A and B are two numbers. The average of A and B is always more than A and less than B. So, my numbers are for example 1 comma 2 are two numbers. Then what is the average of 1 comma 2? 1 plus 2 by 2 is the average of 1 comma 2. What is the value of 1 plus 2 by 2? 1 plus 2 equal to 3, 3 divided by 2 is equal to 1.5. So the number between 1 and 2 is 
means the number 1.5 can be inserted between 1 and 2. So, the numbers obtained are 1 comma 1.5 comma 2. Now, my question again, what, what kind of question arises in my mind that is this the only number 1.5 exists between 1 and 2? No, there exist infinitely many numbers just now we discussed. I can take one number 1.56, 1.54, 1.53, 1.501. All those numbers are more than 1 as well as less than 2. But here, I just want to figure out 5 rational numbers between 3 divided by 5 and 7 divided by 5. There are so many methods or else you can simply find out the decimal forms of those two numbers and randomly you can find out the numbers. Otherwise, if you want to follow one particular method, you can follow one particular method. Suppose, I am following the method of average to figure out the numbers between 3 divided by 5 and 7 divided by 5. So, what is that? Let me consider these two numbers are A and B. My first number is going to be A plus B by 2, correct? Is nothing but A plus B by 2 means half of A plus B. Half of A is equal to 3 divided by 5 plus B is equal to 7 divided by 5. So, what is 3 by 5 plus 7 by 5? 3 plus 7 is equal to 10 divided by 5. 10 divided by 5 is equal to 2. So, my number is going to be half into 2. Half into 2 is equal to what? It is going to be 1. So, my number is, first number is 1. That 1 is a number between 3 divided by 5 and 7 divided by 5. So, I will write the numbers. First, 3 divided by 5 and then I inserted 1 and then I am going to insert 7 divided by 5. But I how many numbers I want? I want 5 numbers. So, what should I do now? I will take these two numbers as one pair. So, I will be taking the average of these two numbers. Again, I will take the average of these two numbers. Then I will be getting one number between 3 divided by 5 and 1. So, what is the average of 3 by 5 and 1? Half of 3 by 5 plus 1 by 1 is going to be half of 3 by 5 plus 1 by 1 is equal to 3 plus 5 that is 8 divided by 5. So, 8 divided by 5 into 1 by 2 is equal to 2 1s 2 4. So, 4 divided by 5. So, therefore, my next number is 4 divided by 5 is in between 3 divided by 5 and 1. So, what are the numbers then? The numbers are going to be first number 3 divided by 5 and next number between 3 by 5 and 1 is 4 divided by 5 and next number obviously 1. Next number was 7 divided by 5. So, I have inserted 4 divided by 5 and 1, there are 2 numbers. Now, how to get third number, fourth number, fifth number, same as like the above. You can either take these 2 numbers to get the number between, otherwise take these 2 numbers to get the number between, otherwise they take these 2 numbers to get the number between and you continue the process to get 5 numbers or 10 numbers or 100 numbers, 100 rational numbers between the given to rational numbers. So, this is one of the procedures to find out the rational numbers. Otherwise, simply you can find out the decimal form of this number 3 divided by 5. Suppose, if you are not able to identify the numbers, the decimal form of 3 divided by 5 is equal to, what is 3 divided by 5? 3 by 5 is equal to 0 0.6. What is the next number? 7 divided by 5. What is the number 7 divided by 5 is going to be 0 0.5 ones are 5 and then 20, 5 fours are 20. Now, you are going to find out the numbers between 0 0.6 and 0 0.14. How many rational numbers between 0 0.6 and 0 0.14? There are infinitely many, which must be more than 0 0.6 and less than 0 0.14. Okay? Is this 0 0.14? Sorry, 7 divided by 5 is equal to 1 point. This is not 0 0.14. 7 divided by 5 is equals to 1.254s or 20. So, this is 1.4. Let me tell you one number between 0 0.6 and 1.4 which is more than 0 0.6 and less than 1.4. Can I write 0 0.7 is a number? 0 0.6, 0 0.7. Can I take 0 0.71? Can I take 0 0.72? Can I take 0 0.73? Can I take 0 0.74? Can I take 0 0.75? and so on the numbers and then 1.4. So, all these numbers are the numbers between 0 0.6 as well as 1.4. This way also we can easily figure out the numbers between the two given rational numbers. right? So, this is the way of finding 
required number of rational numbers between any two rational numbers. Okay? And then see this is the decimal representation of rational numbers. Suppose when you are given some decimal representations, then how to convert those decimal forms of rational numbers into fractional forms. So, decimal forms to fractional forms. See, these are all decimal forms. right? How to convert these decimal forms into fractional forms? If it is 0 0.6, 0 0.14 or 1.4, it is very much easier. Okay? Let me check uh, by taking some problems. Okay? See, the fractions are like 3 divided by 4 is one, dis one fraction and 7 divided by 8 is one fraction and 15 divided by um, 2 is one fraction. So, these are different fractions. I am going to find out the decimal forms of these fractions. So, what are the decimal forms of these fractions? 3 divided by 4. 3 is smaller than 4, obviously 0 point and then 3 will become 30. So, 30 when you divide 30 divided by 4, then 4 7s are 28 and the remainder 2, you will have to put a point. Of course, 0 is already there, right? So, 0 0.7 and then put 0, 4 5s are 20. What does it mean? 0 0.75 is the decimal form of the number 3 divided by 4 and another number 7 divided by 8. So, again 7 is smaller than 8, 0 point. Now, you take 70 and divide 70 by 8. So, 8 8s are 64 and then 10 minus 4 is equal to 6 point. Of course, point was already there, right? So, 0 0.8 and then we will put 0 here. Since 8 8s are 64, so 8 7s are 56 and then 4 0 8 5s are 40. So, what does it mean? 0 0.875, 8 7 5 and coming to 15 divided by 2, 15 is bigger than 2, so that directly you can divide. So, 2 7s are 14 and then 1. 0 0.025s are 10. What does it mean? 7.5 is the decimal form of the number. Suppose if I take one more number, that one more number is 1 divided by 3. Okay? The other number is 1 divided by 3. I am going to find out the decimal form of this number. For that 1 is smaller than 10, so, 0 point, you will have to put 0 point. Now, 10 divided by 3, right? So, 3 3s are 9 and then 1 0. Again, 3 3s are 9 and then 1 0. So, this 3 3 3 is repeating. So, that I can say that 1 by 3 is equal to 0 point 3 3 3 3 and so on. You can write this one as 0 0.3 bar. So, what does it mean? So, what kind of decimal form it is? What do you call this kind of decimal form? This kind of decimal forms are said to be non-terminating. Terminating is nothing but stopping. Non-terminating but repeating decimal. What do you call this kind of decimals? They are said to be terminating decimals. So, we can easily find out the fractional form of any terminating decimal expansion any terminating. For example, you see 0 0.75. So, in this 0 0.75 and 0 0.875 in both the cases, let me take one number. That number is 0 0.123. This is one number. If I want to convert this 0 0.123 into a fractional form, I, you already learned it in 8th class. After decimal, how many number of digits are there? There are 3 digits. So, that you need to multiply by 3 digit number that is 1000 divided by 1000. So, when you multiply and divided by 1000, the numerator is going to be 123 divided by 1000. Right? So, this is the fractional form of this decimal form. So, it is very easy to convert any terminating decimal form into a fractional form just by dividing by one number as well as multiply by one number. But if this number is non-terminating but repeating decimal, then how are we going to figure out its fractional form? Let us have a look on this. Okay? I will take some numbers. Okay? Of course, we will discuss about this 1 by 3 also. Those numbers are, my first number is 0 0.5 bar, 
जीरो पॉइंट फाइव बार वट इज द डेसीमल फॉर्म ऑफ दिस सॉरी वट इज द फ्रैक्शनल फॉर्म ऑफ दिस डेसीमल सो जीरो पॉइंट फाइव बार वॉट डज दिस मीन जीरो पॉइंट फाइव 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 एंड सो ऑन ओके इन्फिनेटली मेनी नंबर ऑफ फाइव विल कम हियर हाउ मेनी नंबर ऑफ डिजिट्स आर रिपीटिंग देर इज ओनली वन डिजिट विच इज रिपीटिंग सो द वेरी फर्स्ट स्टेप टू कन्वर्ट दिस डेसिमल फॉर्म इन टू फ्रैक्शनल फॉर्म यू विल हैव टू कंसिडर दैट नंबर एज सम एन आर एक्स आर वाई वॉट एवर इट इज ओके लेट एस गिव द नेम ऑफ द नंबर लेट एस कंसिडर दिस नंबर इज इक्वल टू सम एन ओके दिस नंबर इज गोइंग टू बी जीरो पॉइंट फाइव बार जीरो पॉइंट फाइव बार मीन्स जीरो पॉइंट फाइव 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 एंड सो ऑन दिस इज द नंबर नाउ द नंबर ऑफ डिजिट्स दैट इट इज रिपीटिंग द नंबर ऑफ डिजिट्स okay you i think you heard about the word period and periodicity how many number of digits are repeating number of digits is said to be periodicity what are the numbers that is repeating is said to be period okay see here the number of digits it is repeating is only one so when only one digit is repeating then you will have to multiply this number on both the sides by 10 If two digits are repeating, multiply by hundred. If three digits are repeating, multiply by thousand. Why to multiply by ten or thousand or hundred? Just now we discussed. For example, there is a number zero point nine is there. If we want to convert this decimal into fractional form, you need to multiply by ten divided by ten. So that is why we are multiplying by ten or hundred or thousand. Okay. So coming back to this, zero point. 5 bar is 0.555 and so on since one digit is repeating you need to multiply the number n is equal to 0.555 and so on by 10 then multiply on both the sides 10 into n is equal to 10 into 0.555 and so on right so 10 into n is going to be 10 n which is equal to 10 into 0.555 and so on. You learned this kind of things in ninth class, uh, eighth class as well as seventh class. When you multiply by 10, then that decimal moves right one step. Then the number is going to be 05.555 and so on. 05 is nothing but 5. So 5.555 and so many number of fives after decimal. And now you should write n again below this 10n. Okay, when you write n below this 10n, what is that n here? 0.555 and so on, right? So you will have to subtract this n is equal to 0.555 and so on from that 10n. So when you subtract 10n minus 1n, n is nothing but that is 1n. 10n minus 1n is equal to 9n, which is equal to see here. 5 minus 5 is 0. 5 minus 5 is 0. 5 minus 5 is 0. 5 minus 0 is equal to 5. So what is the meaning of 5.000? Obviously 5. So that 9n is equal to 5. Then it is going to be n is equal to 5 divided by 9. So 5 divided by 9 is the fractional form of 0.5 bar. Therefore. 0.5 bar is equal to 5 divided by 9 got my point so this way we can convert decimal forms into fractional forms but more precisely those decimal forms are non terminating but repeating decimal forms let us understand one more example uh, if one digit is repeating the other digit is not repeating like the number is the given number is second example 2.59 bar so where 2.59 bar 9 bar means only the digit 9 is repeating but 5 is not repeating this kind of numbers exist but 2.5 bar 9 does not exist you know why because 5 bar in the sense word there are infinitely many number of fives And then nine. How is that possible? If you know how many number of fives are there, then we can keep one more number after that. But we do not know how many number of fives are there. That is why this kind of numbers are not possible. 
ok right 2.59 bar how many number of digits are repeating of course there is only one digit is repeating if one digit is repeating then you will have to first consider that number as x ok x r n whatever it is for example n is equal to 2.59 bar 2.59 bar means what 2.5 9, 9, 9, 9 and so on. Only the 9 is repeating. Since only one digit is repeating, you will have to multiply the given number by 10. So that 10 into n is equal to this number, entire number into 10. Okay. So 10 into n is going to be 10n is equal to, when you multiply by 10, this dot decimal moves right one step then this number is going to be 25.9999 and so on. You understand? And once again write that number n below this 10 n. So, n is equal to what is the number 2.599 and so on, right? So, 2.5999 and so on. Obviously, you will have to subtract one number from the other number. So, this is minus and this is minus. 10n minus n is going to be 9n, which is equal to, now see here 9 minus 9 is 0, again 0, again 0, 9 minus 5 is equal to 4, point, 5 minus 2 is equal to 3 and 2 minus 0 is equal to 2. So, this value is 9n is equal to 23.4, so many zeros. What does it mean? 9n is equal to 23.4, but still there is a decimal, but since it is terminating you can easily remove the decimal just by multiplying by 10 as well as divided by 10. Can we write it as 234 divided by 10? Obviously, but 234 by 10 is not in simplest form. You can still simplify this by cancel both the numerator and denominator by 2. So, 2 5s are 10 and this is 2 1s are 2. Again, 2 1s are 2 and 2 7s are 14. 1 1 7 divided by 5 cannot be simplified further, but this is the value of 9 n. So, therefore, n is going to be 117 divided by 9 into 5. But see here 9 and 117 can be cancelled. 3 3s are 9 and here 3 3s are 9, 27, 3 9s are 27. Still it can be simplified. 3 1s are 3, 3 13. So finally our number is going to be 13 divided by 5. Okay. So 13 divided by 5 is equal to 2.59 bar. Right? So, this way we can convert a non-terminating but repeating decimal in the form of p divided by q means it is a fractional form. Got it? And after that, how to represent these rational numbers on the number line? For example, you are given a number, that number is representation of these rational numbers on the number line. Representation. of rationals or rational numbers on the number line. Suppose I have a number, that number is 1.236. How do I represent this 1.236 on the number line? See, this 1.236 basically what kind of a number means this number available in between which numbers see here this is 1.236 which is more than 1 obviously less than 2 okay i am taking a number line so this is a number line on this number line i will take the numbers 1 2 3 4 5 and so on so this is first zero of course towards left there are negative numbers towards right there are positives so, 0, this is 1, this is 2, this is 3, this is 4, like that I have numbers. But my number 1.236, 1.236 available between 1 and 2. So, this number available between 1 and 2. Means what? I will have to take a magnifying lens and I will have to check where that 1.236 is available between 1 and 2. So, the method that I am following is successive magnification. Right, successive magnification in the sense that number particularly available between which numbers? 
So, this method is said to be successive magnification. Okay, I identified something that my number is in between 1 and 2. Now, I will just drag the number line, I will extend the number line only between 1 and 2. Okay, so my numbers are this is 1 and this is 2. Now, I am going to figure out the numbers between 1 and 2. Okay, how am I going to figure out the numbers between 1 and 2? I will take the numbers 1.1. And then 1.2, and then 1.3, and then 1.4, and so on. What would be the last number in this order? 1.9. Okay. And again, I will go to my number 1.236. See, 1.236 is available between which numbers? Which is more than 1.2, less than 1.3. More than 1.2, less than 1.3 means my number is in between these two numbers. Okay. Again, I will drag this number, number line between 1.2 and 1.3. Okay. So, I will, this is the first one and this is the second one and third one. So, third one is going to be, I am dragging the number line between 1.2 and 1.3. So, this is 1.2 and this is 1.3, right. After 1.2, between 1.3, I can take the scale 1.21. 1.22, 1.23, 1.24 and so on. Okay. Now, 1.236. 1.236 is available uh, between which numbers which is more than 1.23 less than 1.24. Right. More than 1.23 less than 1.24. This is the number. Okay. And now, again I will have to drag between 1.23 and 1.24. So, this is the fourth step. The fourth step is this is the number line 1.23 and then this is 1.24. Now, I will have to drag and give the numbers more than 1.23 that is 1.231 and then 1.232 and then 1.234, 1.235, 1.236, 1.236 and so on. Where is my number then? My number is 1.236. Yes, my number is over here exactly. So, this is what the way of representing this kind of numbers by using the method of successive magnification. Okay. So, easily we can represent these numbers by the method of successive magnification. So, this is all about rational numbers and coming to the next number system. What is the next number system after rational numbers? Can anybody say? The next number system after rational numbers. That is, yes, the next number system after rational numbers. The number which is not a rational number. A number which is not a rational number is called irrational number. Okay. So, next number system is irrational numbers. So, what do you mean by irrational numbers? we can define these irrational numbers since these are not rational numbers. Not rational numbers are nothing but these are q dash numbers. Okay? Since which are not rational numbers, then these are said to be irrational numbers. We can define these irrational numbers as q dash is equal to there is a number like x. This number is strictly not a rational number. Means what? x does not belong to q. These kind of numbers are said to be irrational numbers. Okay? You just find out one number which is not rational, then it is said to be irrational numbers. Okay? Let us try to identify some irrational numbers. So, being a number is a rational number, then we can say that the decimal form of the number that is either terminating decimal, but non-terminating and repeating, non-terminating but repeating decimal. Those kind of numbers are rational numbers. Suppose, if a number is neither terminating nor repeating, then what do you call that number? Obviously, that number is not rational. Since that number is not rational, we can call that number as irrational number. Okay? For example, if I take one number like 1.232425262 and so on, can you call this number as a rational number? Obviously, no, because this number is neither terminating nor repeating number. So, that is why I cannot say that this number is, this number is rational number. Then, this number is called irrational number. Suppose, if I give you one number 3 
and another number 4. How many number of irrational numbers possible between 3 and 4? Irrational numbers are nothing but number which is neither terminating nor repeating. Okay? And the number which is more than 3 and less than 4. Since there are infinitely many number of rational numbers exist between two numbers, obviously infinitely many number of irrational numbers also exist between any two numbers. Suppose I, I am going to tell one number between 3 and 4 which is an irrational number that is that is 3.101001000 and so on. So, this is a number which is called irrational number which is more than 3 and less than 4. Yes, there is one irrational number. Like that how many number of irrational numbers possible between two numbers? There are infinitely many numbers. So, here we can conclude one thing that there exist infinitely many number of irrational numbers are possible between two rational numbers and there exist infinitely many number of rational numbers also possible between two irrational numbers. Okay? Suppose this is one irrational number. I will take one more irrational number that is 0 0.11 2, 1, 3, 1, 4, 1, 5, 1 and so on. So, this is one irrational number. Can't you find one rational number between 3.10 and so on and 3.11 and so on? It is easily understood one thing that it is more than 3.10 and this is more than 3.11. You can find out one number between 3.10 and 3.11. What is the number? 3.10 1, 2 and so on. So, this number is more than that and less than this, is not it? Like that there exist infinitely many number of rationals exist between two irrationals and irrationals exist between two rational numbers. Okay? So, this is about the decimal form of irrational numbers. Okay? But is there any other form of irrational numbers? Let us have a small look on this irrational numbers. We have a concept called irrational number, the special forms of irrational numbers. Of course, these are also a part of irrational numbers. They are like, there is a number 3 raised to the power of 5. 3 raised to the power of 5 can be considered as 3 into 3 into 3 into 3. So, when you multiply, you will get 3 raised to the power of 5 is equal to 243. That 243 is purely a rational number. Suppose, if I would say 3 to the power of 1 divided by 5, can you write 3 to the power of 1 divided by 5 as 3 power 5 into 3 power 3 into 3 into 3 up to 5? No, it is not possible because 3 raised to the power of 1 divided by 5. For that, you need to understand one very simple logic for 3 divided by 5. 3 to the power of 1 divided by 5 is basically not a rational number. This is a special kind of number. So, this special kind of numbers are called certs, S U R D S. Certs are radicals, R A D I C A L S. I will just give you a definition for a cert or a radical. Okay? For example, A is one number and N is one more number, okay? where A is A positive rational number, A is a positive rational number and N is a positive integer which is more than 1, A is a positive rational number and N is a positive integer which is more than 1, then A to the power of 1 by N is called a third or a radical of order N. Come again, A is a positive rational number and N is the positive integer which value is more than 1, then A to the power of 1 by N is called as a third or a radical and we can also represent this A to the power of 1 by N as Nth root A provided there is a condition for that where A cannot be expressed, A cannot be expressed as nth power of one rational number, nth power of one rational number. Then a to the power of n or nth root a is said to be a third or a radical of order n. 
please do remember the definition because the definition is very much important if you can understand the definition clearly then only you can apply apply the concept otherwise you cannot apply the concept i repeat a is any positive rational number and n is any positive integer which should be more than 1 then a to the power of 1 by n is called as a third or a radical of order n and we can represent this a to the power of 1 by n as nth root a right and where a cannot be expressed as nth power of any rational number so please try to remember the definition so this is what we discussed uh, in this class okay we will um, discuss the next level of these words in the coming class thank you